Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of Eve University. And I am MTU Enforcer, also of Eve University. And today we are going to talk about starbases. Starbases, also known as player-owned starbases, also known as POS towers or POS towers. A starbase is a control tower surrounded by a force field and uh, optionally various starbase modules. Uh, these modules provide the starbase with various functionality, allowing the starbase to be used for some purposes or others. Uh, wormhole corporations will often live out of a starbase because there are almost never any stations or outposts in wormhole space. Starbases will be set up in high security space uh, for to set up laboratory facilities. Uh, some corporations will use the starbase force field as a fleet staging area, so on and so forth. In order to set up a starbase, you must be in a player corporation, and you must have the appropriate roles in a player corporation, which should be starbase conf uh, config starbase equipment and config equipment. Is that correct? I believe so. I'll check here real quick. But go ahead and continue on. Um, a director or the CEO can also do this. Um, a quick warning about giving somebody director roles, though, uh, since it's mildly related. Uh, when you create a new player corporation, that corporation starts off owning 1,000 shares of itself. So under owned by, uh, owned by cor sorry, you go to the wallet, corporation wallet tab, the shares sub tab, uh, under Owned by Corp and Shareholders, you'll see that the corporation owns 1,000 shares of itself. When you create your own player corporation, always make sure to right-click on the shares and transfer the shares to your character. Uh, so in this case, uh, the, play the alt corporation that we're using, Interstellar Trade Union, uh, those shares have been transferred, so I can't steal the corporation. Otherwise, I'd, as a director, I'd be able to transfer all 1,000 shares to myself and then start a vote to forcibly change the CEO and thus steal the corporation. So just be aware of that. So I am on this, forgot to mention that I am on the Singularity Test server. Uh, today is Saturday, June the 20th, 2015. The build on Singularity is 903689. So I am in 6-tac Charlie Zeta 49er in Syndicate. Uh, and I am specifically at Planet 5, Moon 11. I've warped to the warp in point for the moon. I just warped to the moon. This is where I landed. I have a Minmatar control tower in the fleet hangar of my deep space transport. Uh, this Minmatar control tower is 8,000 cubic meters. So basically, any uh, vessel that has an 8,000 cubic meter hold of some uh, of some sort should suffice. A fleet hangar or a standard cargo hold. So I right-click, and I launch for corporation. And the control tower... Uh, in this case, the control tower has appeared next to me. The last time we tried to record, this control tower appeared 169 kilometers away. Go figure. Control, control tower actually showed up next to us, but when we anchored it, that's when it moved. Ah, okay, gotcha. So I'm going to again right-click the Mimitar control tower and anchor. Anchor structure. All right, anchoring the selected object, it will take around 1,800 seconds to do so. And it, it just popped up next to me. Yep. My video caught it uh, changing locations. So, warping over to the control tower, since it's more than 150 kilometers away, I can warp to it. But you can see this blue translucent thing where the control tower is going to appear. Uh, now anchoring it is a 30 minute process. I'm not going to bore you with the entire 30 minutes, so let's skip ahead. 
All right, so we've skipped ahead to the part where the control tower has finished anchoring. Uh, that was a 30 minute process. Uh, so I can right click it and access the fuel bay. And I can also right click it and access the strontium bay. And these serve two different purposes. Uh, in order for a control tower to be operational, it needs fuel. Uh, at the very least, uh, Minmatar fuel blocks. More specifically, you can right click on the tower and show info on the tower. And under fuel requirements, you will see that it requires Minmatar fuel blocks, 40 of them per hour. Um, additionally, if you're putting this thing up in high security space, then you need the appropriate Starbase Charter for whoever's territory you're putting up in. Uh, so if you're setting up a Starbase in Renz or Heck or Pater or Lustrovic or someplace like that, that's Mimitar High Security Space, so you'll need Mimitar Starbase Charters. Whereas if you're trying to set this up in Amarian Space, you need Amar Empire Starbase Charters, so on and so forth. Um, but at the very least, you need the fuel blocks. All right, so I'm going to drag the fuel blocks into the fuel bay. All right. uh, the strontium clathrates are for what's called reinforced mode. Uh, because if your player corporation is at war, or if you've set this up outside high security space, somebody may come along and shoot the starbase. Or more specifically, they'll target the control tower, shoot the control tower. And you know what? Now that I have it loaded up with fuel, let me right click and put online. Here we go. So that's another 30 minute process. So with strong, um, so people can come around and shoot at your control tower if they're at war with your player corporation, or if you set up the control tower outside high security space. Um, so people can shoot at the control tower, and when the control tower's shields are knocked down to 25%, uh, it's the control tower stops supplying CPU to the modules. I forgot to mention that the control tower provides a CPU and power grid to the starbase modules that are anchored around it, uh, just like uh, modules on a ship require CPU or power grid when fit to the ship. Right. So the same concept is used for Starbase modules. Um, and MTU Enforcer is shoving various modules, uh, Starbase modules, into my fleet hangar right now. That's what you see appearing here. Uh, so once the shields are knocked down to 25%, the Starbase enters reinforced mode. It stops supplying CPU, so any Starbase modules that require CPU will cease to function. Such as, for example, uh, mobile laboratories. So if I right-click this experimental laboratory uh, fitting, it has a CPU usage. So... When the control tower's shields are knocked down to 25%, it enters reinforced mode. Certain starbase modules may stop functioning at that point. Uh, and when it's in reinforced mode, it cannot be loaded with additional fuel or additional strontium clathrates, but it's also immune to attack. And there will be a publicly visible timer on the control tower indicating when it comes out of reinforced mode. This is to prevent the control tower from just being destroyed during a nighttime operation when everybody is asleep or otherwise offline because they're asleep, they're, they're off to school or work, or they're taking their significant other out to the movies or whatnot. So the reinforcement timer uh, gives the defenders time to wake up and realize, oh, hey, somebody's attacking our starbase. We should go do something about that. And then when it e exits the reinforcement timer, presumably there will be an attacking fleet and a defending fleet already on site and shooting at each other, and the attackers will try to destroy the, uh, the control tower, while the defenders try to use remote shield boosters to prop the shields back up to 50%. If the defenders can get the shields back up to 50%, then they can reload it with strontium clathrates again, and that will reset the availability of the reinforced mode. 
in which case the attackers would have to knock it down to 25% and then wait out the reinforcement timer all over again. Uh, but if the defenders can't get it back up to 50% shields, then the attackers can just shoot out the rest of the shields, uh, blow away the armor, blow away the structure, and then all the starbase modules that were anchored around the control tower can then be unanchored and stolen by anybody. Um, MTU Enforcer, it, uh, can I start um, deploying these um, the resistance modules? Sure. Uh, the, the setup that I put in your fleet hangar is basically the standard um, resist uh, for a Mimitar Cloak Tower. Uh, three for your two uh, resists that are at zero, two resists for the one that sits at, what, 25%, and one for the one that sits at 50%. Okay. So, nine total. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah, since reinforced mode is triggered at 25% shields, it's usually the shield resistances that are important to a control tower. So, uh, the sh I'm looking at the show info window, and the shield re damage resistance for Minmitar control tower is 50% EM, 25% thermal, and zero on the kinetic and explosive. So, that's why the setup here is three for kinetic, three for explosive, two for thermal, and one for EM. Because the biggest resistance holes are kinetic and explosive. So let's put up the explosives first. So I right click and launch for corporation. And that starts off unanchored. Can I right click and anchor structure? And that gives me a control box to move around. Interesting. You know, I'd never seen this interface before because I've never set up a starbase before. But the uh, the white arrows are similar to what you see for probe scanning, and you've probably, as a new player, you've probably seen probe scanning at least in the exploration tutorials. So you can position the uh, the explosion dampening array uh, wherever you need it. I do recommend keeping it inside the force field because this is an object that uh, increases the shield resistance of the control tower. You don't want the resistance module getting blasted away first before the control tower is under attack. So you want to keep it kind of close-ish to the control tower. And let me see if I can right-click anchor here. You cannot do that because it requires the nearby tower to be online. All right. So, right-click, cancel anchoring. So nothing further that I can do with that. Now, I've been talking about the control tower having a force field. That will be much easier to demonstrate uh, once the force field actually comes online. And that will happen when the control tower finishes onlining. Remember, you need to anchor the tower. Sorry, you need to launch the tower for corporation, anchor the tower, then load the fuel bay, and preferably, you should probably also load the strontium clathrate bay at the same time, I suppose, uh, and then online the tower. So the anchoring and the onlining process are 30 minutes each, so let's skip ahead. All right, we are back, and the tower is online. Uh, for reference, it's been a week since we did the previous recording. So today is now uh, June the 27th, 2015. Uh, Singularity is now running build 909753. So one of the things we got forgot to mention about control towers is that you have to put a password uh, for the force field. Skill training completed. Ignore that, I was just skill training for the new tactical destroyers uh, just before the recording started. So I right-click the control tower, set password, and MTU has already done this. I know because the force field is up. But normally somebody would have to set a password and then click OK. The force field will not go up without a password. 
Now the force field does a couple of things. First of all, it prevents anything inside the force field from starting target locks or from being target locked, except the control tower itself. So anybody outside the control tower can tar uh, out anybody outside the force field can target lock the control tower, but not anything else in here. So none of the uh, so MTU and I are not directly attackable, at least not until the control tower has been destroyed. And that involves a rigmarole of slamming down the shields to 25%, waiting out the 24 to 48 hour reinforcement timer, and then destroying, uh, wiping out the rest of the shields, armor, and structure. Uh, but yeah, a password is required for the force field. The other thing the, fa the force field does is that it keeps out most people. It will admit corp mates, it will admit uh, alliance mates, I think. And it will admit anybody who has the password. So on my own ship, I can right-click my ship and... Where did it go? Enter Starbase Force Field Password. And this is to enter the Shield Harmonic Password for my ship. Anybody who knows the password for the, star, for the control tower can enter the force field. It still won't let them target lock inside anything that's inside the force field, but they can and fly into the force field. Otherwise, if they try to fly into the force field, they just get stopped as though they're bouncing into a very large sob uh, solid object. And of course, as is with EVE Online, collisions do not do damage. So I can right-click my own ship to set the Starbase force field password for my ship, uh, and I can right-click the control tower if I have the appropriate permissions to set the uh, password on the control tower. And these two passwords have to match to let me into the force field if I am not in the same player corporation. Of course, if I'm not in the same player corporation, I can't change or set the password on the control tower. All right, so. Uh, MTU gave me a bunch of mods for the worth... control tower. Sorry, go, go ahead. Go. It's also worth noting that you can also set the password by right-clicking on your capacitor. Um, on your pass capacitor down at the in, on most P players, it's at the bottom of your screen, the big yellow circle. Yep, right there. Enter Starbase Force Field password. Right-clicking the capacitor and right-clicking your own ship in space has the same effect. It brings up the exact same menu. Alright, so... Uh, open Fleet Hangar. I have a bunch of modules here. So, um, I've mentioned Reinforced Mode before. So, if the Control Tower's shields are knocked down to 25%, it goes into what's called Reinforced Mode. Now, the Control Tower has two bays in it. There's a Fuel Bay... Uh, which is necessary for it to remain online. Uh, so the various Starbase modules that we're about to start placing uh, around the control tower need require that the tower be powered. It needs to be fueled. So it has to have these fuel blocks. Additionally, if the control tower is in high security space, it needs Starbase charters for, the, for whoever's high security it is. So... Amatar Mandate, Khanid Kingdom, Galente Federation, uh, Minmatar Republic, Kaldari State, or Amar Empire. Additionally, the control tower has a strontium bay, and it, this takes strontium clathrates, which are needed for reinforced mode. If you forget to load the tower with strontium clathrates, then there is no reinforced mode at 25%. So, uh, when the shields go down to 25%, there's no reinforced mode, the attackers can just keep shooting. And then destroy the tower immediately, and they can wipe out everything while you're asleep. So you need to make sure you load strontium clathrates into the strontium bay. Alright. So, because reinforced mode occurs at 25% shields, it's usually the shield resistances that are important. Uh, so, for Minmatar Tower, we may have covered this uh, last time, but just to 
review real quick. On a Minmatar tower, uh, the resistance holes are explosive and kinetic, and to a lesser degree, thermal. So let's patch up the explosive hole first. So I right-click Explosion Dampening, and I launch for Corporation. And it is unanchored. So I'm going to right click and anchor structure. And I can choose where to put this thing. And I might decide, you know what, I'm going to move, move it a little over to the side so it's not in the way, just in case we want to put anything next to the control tower itself for some reason. Uh, right click, anchor here. And that only took a few seconds. So let's do that again. And you know what? Uh, Alright, let me continue anchoring this. Um, anchor structure. Put that over there. Right click anchor here. Launch for corporation. Let me put this thing out next. This is a corporate hangar array. I'm going to anchor structure. Let me put this over next to MTU Enforcer. And anchor here. Anchor. And I'm going to... Once that's anchored... Oh, that's a little farther away than I... Alright, let me move over there. Because I may as well have MTU also help with anchoring some of these modules. Since you've seen the process once, you've seen the process a dozen times. A hundred times. So, the corporate hangar array. Once I get close to the thing. I can right click and access storage. And in the first division, let me put... Uh, here, let me put the two heat dissipations. Uh, hold on, what's going on? You cannot use the corporate hangar array as it needs to be online, and it is currently not. Let me fix that problem. Right click, put online. There we go. All right, MTU, I've put the um, heat and ballistic modules in. Could you go ahead and anchor those, and I'll get the um, explosion and photon. So, explosion dampening. Explosion dampening. Sure. Uh, right click. Let's anchor the structure, and I will put it over there. Anchor. Ah, right. So a tower can only al will only allow one module to be anchored at a time. Now, as, a, as I understand it, for the most part, it doesn't matter where inside the force field I put these things. Um, just so long as they're inside the force field, and they cannot be attacked directly. Certain modules, of course, cannot be inside the force field. Uh, any sort of weapons battery or electronic warfare battery, for example... Uh, has to be outside the force field. Uh, and to you, should I also start anchoring these laboratories? Sure, go ahead. I already got the personal hangar. Oh. All right, I, I frame locked for a moment. All right, there we go. So let me anchor the structure. I'll put it above the tower here. Mm -hmm. 
And basically the process here is right click the module in your cargo bay, launch for corporation. This does require you to have the appropriate roles. Then find the th unanchored thing that just appeared, right click anchor structure, drag the uh, control box into position, and then right click anchor here. And then finally, you have to right click each thing and put online. Because anchor just means that it can't be scooped up without permission, but it's not actually operational. And some of these things have large onlining times. Which I forgot to check. All right, we're going to skip ahead to the point where we finish onlining everything. All right, and we've skipped ahead to the part where we finished uh, uh, anchoring and onlining everything. Um, I'm going to right-click the research laboratory as an example. Uh, the research laboratory is really short. Anchoring is five seconds. Onlining is only three seconds. Uh, but the shield hardening arrays, uh, if I show info on that, the, while the anchoring delay is also short, 5 seconds, the onlining delay is 120 seconds. So that's what we were uh, waiting for. But now we have everything anchored and onlined. Uh, let me show you the management screen. So I'm going to right click the Minotaur control tower and click manage. And let me close my fleet hangar. Let me close my fleet hangar. Alright, so here's the manage window. And you can see here uh, the name of the tower, its location, uh, the owner of it, Interstellar Trade Union, and various statistics about it. Uh, so its current shields, armor, and structure percentages. You can also see uh, power and CPU. So just like a player ship, just like you need a power grid and central processing unit uh, to online modules on your ship, you also need power grid and central processing unit to online modules next to a control tower. So all these things that you see floating in space that are online, the ballistic deflection array, the explosion dampening array, the heat dissipation array, so on and so forth, all of these require CPU and power grid. The heat dissipation array uses 250 teraflops, the power grid uses 150 gigawatts or as the game puts it, 150,000 megawatts. Uh, similarly, this uh, design laboratory, 600 teraflops, 120 gigawatts. So if something is anchored but not online, it's not functional, it's not operating, uh, you don't get any benefit from it, uh, but you can online it as long as you have the power grid and CPU available. If it's just anchored, it just means nobody else can scoop it up. Uh, not unless they have the appropriate roles in the player corporation that owns the thing. Uh, if the Minbitar control tower were to be destroyed, either, you for again, you forgot to load the strant uh, strontium clathrate bay, or it came out of reinforced mode and it was destroyed uh, later, uh, then all the various starbase modules can be scooped up uh, without any special permissions or roles. Uh, but this top section has a summary on all of that. You also see uh, the status of the control tower itself, whether the tower itself is online or merely anchored. And you can also see the shield resistances on the tower from here. Uh, for those of you who are good at mathematics, you will notice that the shield resistances on a control tower are apparently not subject to stacking penalties. So with the explosion dampening array, this reduces the explosive damage resistance bonus by 25%. Uh, and here we go. So I grab my calculator. This It basically multiplies your remaining explosive vulnerability by 0 
Now, the Mentar control tower starts off 0% resistant or completely vulnerable to explosive damage. So we have 0 0.75, we have three explosion dampening arrays, 0 0.75 cubed, uh, which means our tower should be 42.2% vulnerable. Uh, subtract that from 1, uh, which means 57-58% resistant. And yes, that's the result we get. We are 57% resistant to explosive damage. So unlike ships, control towers are not subject to stacking penalties. That being said, your only options for increasing the shield resistances are these, uh, are these arrays, and they are only 25% resistance each. And you only have so much CPU and power grid to play around with. So it's not like you can make a control tower 90% resistant to everything. Sorry, go ahead, MTU. Various sources say that um, it's best only to have at max four of your uh, four mod four, uh, four hardeners for your 0% um, holes, uh, three for your 25% hole, and two for your 50% hole. Which, in the case of the Minmatar control tower, would mean four explosive. Four kinetic, three thermal, and two electromagnetic. Those numbers will, of course, change depending upon which racial control tower we're talking about. Make sure you right click the control tower and show info uh, and look at the shield damage resistances for the control tower. Alright, so below the header section on the control tower manager, we've got three four tabs, General, Defense, Structures, and Processes. Uh, under General, it tells us the force field is active, and we can change the Starbase password from here. Presumably, this means we can change anybody who has appropriate roles in the corporation can change the tower password from, from anywhere. But you type in the password, you type in the same password, uh, and then you click Apply. There's also a checkbox for allowing corporation member usage, but I noticed that there's no checkbox for alliance member usage. So maybe you... I, I don't know if alliance mates are covered under the corporation checkbox, or if alliance mates would need to be told what the password is. Which is risky, because they can then tell the password to enemies, uh, and then enemies can use the password to get inside the force field. And there's also checkboxes. Uh, the tower will send you a notification telling you when fuel is about to run out, and those notifications will appear here in your emails, uh, email window, the communications tab. You can also get a calendar event for when fuel runs out. Uh, defense tab. Uh, presumably this is for towers that have weapons batteries of some sort, or electronic warfare batteries. So you can tell your control tower to automatically attack anything that has lower than a certain standing uh, from your player corporation. So if you set, so if I leave this at zero and I set somebody to negative five, and there are weapons batteries anchored and online next to the force field, then the weapons batteries will shoot at anybody who's below zero standings from us. So if we set somebody to negative five, our control, uh, our uh, weapons batteries at least the ones that are online, will start firing. Given, of course, target locking delays. Uh, you can tell the control tower to attack people who have a security status lower than a certain value. Um, you can tell the control tower to attack people who are on grid if their security set status drops. And you can tell the control tower to attack war targets. Uh, for our towers in high security space, I think the I think the tower will not commit a Concordokan offense. MTU, do you know anything about that? From what I've read, it's best to keep um, in high sec to only have it have, have the, the um, value uh, of attack, attack when at war. war. Uh, selected, uh, selected so that 
Concord doesn't destroy your boss. Gotcha. All right. So if you're operating control tower in high security, only have it attack war targets. This is assuming, of course, that you're not some uh, two-man operation that has to take down the control tower whenever you're war decked. Um, let's see. Under the Structures tab, you get a summary of all the structures that are anchored or online, or possibly even just floating unanchored uh, as well. All the structures that are near the control tower. So rather than have, uh, rather than having to mouse over every bracket in space next to the control tower manually, you can just pull up the entire list here. Uh, you can also select a particular structure and tell it to anchor, unanchor, put online, or put offline. Uh, under the access tab, uh, ah, more stuff about corporation roles, apparently. So under the access tab, uh, to view, there's permissions for view and take. Now, some of these are not relevant to certain structures. The ballistic deflection arrays, the, the resistance arrays, for example, don't have any sort of internal inventory. Um, so, I don't think these are relevant for a uh, ballistic deflection array, for example. But for, say, a personal hangar array, you can dictate uh, what role is needed in order to be able to look inside the personal hangar array, or to take things from the personal hangar array. Uh, and the choices are configure Starbase equipment, Starbase fuel technician, corporation, and alliance. Okay. So you can allow alliance mates to make use of the personal hangar array, for example. Uh, although given that, I'm beginning to wonder if this checkbox we covered, allow corporation member usage, also allows alliance mates. Hmm. Alright, but that's the access subtab. Uh, then we have the control subtab. Uh, assume control, relinquish control. MTU, do you know what these are? Hang on, let me. I was looking at something set that right now. Oh, uh, uh, that's for your uh, POS batteries, I believe. Uh, any of your sentries, uh, you can g if you're a starbase defense manager, you can gain control of your uh, of the uh, weapons array. Gotcha. We don't have any weapons arrays or e-war batteries, so there's nothing listed here. Uh, but if there were any guns anchored around this control tower, this is where we would take control of them. Uh, the next sub-tab, uh, jump bridges. We do not hold sovereignty here, so this is blank. Uh, and then finally... Uh... The control tower sub tab is blank. Let's see. I mean, blank. Go ahead and you. Go ahead and you. I think that might be if you have additional control towers in the same system. I'm I'm not quite sure. Um. Yeah. Right now. Gotcha. And the mouse over tooltip says: Note, remember you can rename your structures to fit to the scheme you like best. We recommend renaming your control towers to reflect the moon they are at. This information only updates every five minutes. Uh, let's finally go to the pro uh, processes tab, and we have fuel and production. Under fuel, uh, we just have two entries, purpose online and purpose reinforced. So this, uh, so from the management window here, you can tell, uh, Let's see how much fuel you have in the fuel bay and how many strontium clathrates you have in the strontium bay. Um, so if we leave this control tower alone, the force field will collapse in 29 days and 2 hours when it finally runs out of fuel. Um, but the reinforced timer won't come into effect unless somebody shoots the shields down to 25%. Now, uh, I accessed... Oh, let's actually look at the production tab. Uh, moon produces, huh? 
So, you may have heard of something called moon goo. So let's see, moon produces hydrocarbons, one batch per cycle, 100 every 60 minutes, uh, atmospheric gases, evaporate deposits, and silicates. Yeah, so you may have heard of something called moon goo, and you may have heard that it has to do with Tech 2 manufacturing. Uh, this is not a class on Tech 2, this is not a video about Tech 2 manufacturing, so I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, but if you have a Tech 2 blueprint copy, and you want to manufacture Tech 2 ships or modules from that blueprint copy, some of the manufacturing materials are rather exotic, and originally derive from moon goo. So you have to find a moon that has uh, good materials, and you need to put it. Uh, you need to online a control tower near that moon, and you need to anchor and online a moon harvesting array along with other modules. Um, I don't think we're going to get around to that in this video uh, specifically. Uh, process control uh, is if you've got. Uh, reactors for converting moon goo into actually useful materials or if you're doing things like uh, refining gases either case-based gases to make uh, boosters that is to say performance enhancing drugs for cap for capsuleers or if you're refining wormhole space gases for uh, use in making strategic cruisers if I remember correctly I might have that last bit wrong but that covers the management window. Uh, I access the management window by actually being next to the control tower, right-clicking it, and selecting Manage. Uh, presumably, I can also find this under Corporation. So let's see. Uh, assets tab. Is it Assets? Uh, MTU, is it possible to, uh, to manage a Starbase from the Corporation window? Oh, uh, it looks like it. It's under Assets in Space. Found it. Yep. So, I expand uh, 6 tac Charlie Zeta 49 uh, zero jumps, and that shows me uh, all the different things that are in space in that solar system. Um, I would presume this list would get extremely cluttered if we owned multiple star bases in the solar system. But I, there's the Minmatar control tower, and I can right-click it. Uh, show info if you want Yes, you can, just from Corporation. Oh, the, oh, I'm not, not seeing a manage option. Can I double-click this? Hmm. Well, I can see that it exists, but how do I actually select manage from the Corporation window, assuming that I weren't actually here? I doesn't look like you can. I All just right. tried it myself. All right. All right. So maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyway, on to the other modules here. So we've got the corporate hangar array, uh, which is basically just a corporation hangar in space. So I can access the storage, and as long as I have the appropriate rules. Uh, I can access any uh, one or more of the divisions. Um, and this operates very similar to uh, a corporation hangar inside a station, except that for the corporate hangar array at a starbase, it is volume limited. So the sum total of all stuff in all seven divisions must be less than three million cubic meters. Additionally, we also have the personal hangar array, so let's see if I access the storage here. Uh, I personally can shove 50,000 cubic meters into a personal hangar array. Uh, is that right? Uh, MTU, is that 50,000 per person or is that 50,000 total? I think that's uh, 50,000 per person, but I, I, I think I remember that it's got... It is limited, um, and I think it might actually take into consideration how big your corporation is. Um, I'd have to look into that. All right. So we're not sure. 
Uh, I'm gonna. Sh I have extra Mimitar fuel blocks. I'm gonna shove those in. That takes up four thousand cubic meters. So MTU, go ahead and access the storage and tell me if it what it tells you for the storage. The personal hangar. The personal hangar. I uh, just did. Uh, yeah, it is fifty thousand per person. Okay. Because I, I'm looking right now and it's just showing up 50, uh, zero of 50,000 for me. Alright, and that number hasn't changed? Hasn't changed. Alright, I just put in and removed my extra Mimitar fuel blocks a couple of times. Uh, so yeah, that's 50,000 cubic pe uh, meters per person. Uh, next over here... Uh, Let's take a look at these three up top. So we've got some mobile laboratories. Uh, let me divert into talking about blueprints a little bit. Uh, if you have a Tech 1 Blueprint original, uh, you can shove it into a, a public facility for improving uh, the blueprint in, some in one of two ways. Either reducing the manufacturing time per batch or reducing the amount of materials required. So this is material efficiency research and uh, time efficiency uh, research, I think. Uh, let's see. Business. Is under business? Industry. So if I look at the industry window and I look at facilities, um, public facilities and material efficiency research. So I can take a look at how many uh, publicly available ma uh, material efficiency slots are available. Oh, I'm sorry, right. Slots are the old system. CCP got rid of slots. Uh, that was sometime in the past year, I think. So these facilities all provide public uh, material efficiency research. So you can shove your blueprint original into any of these public facilities and, con and conduct research on it to raise its material level uh, and make it more efficient in terms of you don't need as many minerals to manufacture this ship or module or whatever it is. But the busier a facility is, the more expensive it is, it's going to be for you to improve your blueprint at that facility. Uh, so you may want to set up a starbase uh, with your own private laboratory. Uh, and that's what these laboratories do for you. Uh, you can improve your blueprints at these laboratories, uh, and you don't have to share that facility with anyone. This was much more... I know this was definitely important under the old industry system more than a year ago, back when this was all slot-based, and the public facilities were basically booked for months in advance in high-security space, and sometimes even weeks in advance in low- and null-security space. So it's kind of hard to get time uh, for material efficiency research from a public facility. So star bases uh, with uh, laboratories like these were very common because these were private facilities. Only the owners could make use of them, and that was a big reason. That that's a big reason for having star bases in high security space, because you're doing a lot of blueprint research. Uh, so the design laboratory, if I show info on that, uh, portable laboratory facilities anchorable within control tower fields. The structure has copying and invention activities. So activity bonuses, 40% reduction in copy activity required time, 50% reduction in invention required time. So if you do, uh, if you go through the invention process uh, to convert Tech 1 blueprint copies into Tech 2 blueprint copies, uh, these laboratories help with that. Uh, let's see, experimental laboratory. And let me have my camera orbit these things. So experimental laboratories are used for reverse engineering of ancient technology. This structure has reverse engineering ac uh, activities with no specific time or, mater or material bonuses. So the experimental laboratory is if you're doing stuff with uh, wormhole space materials, and if you're trying to make 
Tech 3 strategic cruisers or Tech 3 tactical destroyers. Uh, next we have just the ordinary research laboratory and this is for improving Tech 1 blueprint originals. So it provides reductions in the time required to improve the material efficiency or time efficiency level of a blueprint original. And that can actually be significant. So for example... So if I look up a Dominic's blueprint off the market, this is a, a blueprint original for Dominix. Uh, material efficiency research. Uh, time per run, one hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so that's not so bad. Uh, but if you're a heavy duty industrialist and you're trying to improve a lot of blueprints, a little under two hours for each level of material efficiency research can be a significant amount of time. So having uh, a bonus to reduce the amount of time involved uh, can be a big time saver for you. So that's what the laboratories do for you, and in high security space, uh, that's probably uh, the mo still the most common use for the star bases that I'm aware of. Uh, MTU, is that correct? As, as far as I'm aware. All right. Now I've talked about the um, a little bit about the personal hangar array and the corporate hangar array. Um, if you've never lived in wormhole space, you might wonder why you would have these. And if you've got stations in system, you probably don't want to bother. Uh, but for wormhole-based corporations, with the exception of the Thera solar system, there are no stations or outposts in wormhole space. Thera is the only exception. Uh, so all the other uh, wormhole systems... There are no stations there where you can st uh, store your stuff. So wormhole corporations have to live out of a starbase, and to store their stuff, they need a corporate hangar array or a personal hangar array. Or uh, for holding ships, they need a ship maintenance array or some such. And if they're going to be living in wormhole space, they might have to manufacture their own stuff. They may need to manufacture their own ammunition. Um, so they may need assembly arrays for that purpose. Uh, we, we haven't shown off any assembly arrays here, um, but there's a wide variety of Starbase modules uh, that can be used. And if you want to take a look at them for yourself, you can go to the Market, the Browse tab, click the gear icon, make sure Show Only Available is Empty, leave that unchecked. Then go down to Structures, Starbase Structures, and everything that can be... Uh, everything that requires CPU and power grid from a control tower is listed under here. The control towers themselves are also listed here. So these are all the star, uh, star base structures. We've got weapons batteries for shooting at people nearby, assembly arrays for manufacturing things, compression arrays for taking raw ore and compressing them into a smaller volume. Uh, the control towers we w already discussed. Corporate hangar arrays we've discussed. Uh, the Sinocerial generator array, uh, Sinocerial system jammer, jump bridges, laboratories, moon harvesting arrays, all the various starbase structures you can read about here. Uh, some of these starbase structures require sovereignty. So, for example, a Sinocerial system jammer to prevent somebody from lighting a Sinocerial field so that capitals and super capitals must use stargates. Uh, to enter the solar system, rather than just jumping in anywhere a Sino field happens to be lit. A Sino Cyril system jammer uh, is, let's see, anchoring requires infrastructure upgrade, Sino Cyril suppression. So it has to be a claimable null security system. We cannot do it here in 6 Tac Charlie Zeta 4 Niner because the Syndicate holds sovereignty here. So a player alliance cannot set up an, uh, an infrastructure hub in this solar system. It has to be um, in a solar system that is null security and not claimed by NPCs like the Syndicate or Thuker tribe, 
or Servant Sisters of Eve, or Angel Cartel, or whoever. So we need an infrastructure hub, and the infrastructure hub needs the sino suppression upgrade. So if there's an infrastructure hub in system with us, and we're part of the same alliance, uh, and that infrastructure hub has sino suppression, then we could set up a sino system jammer. And as long as the sino system jammer is online, capitals cannot use their jump drives to teleport themselves to a sino field here in system. Capitals and super capitals have to come in through the Stargate. Uh, to, uh, again, today is June the 27th, 2015. If you're returning to EVE Online from a uh, moderate absence, yes, this is a change. Capitals and super capitals can now use Stargates. I kid you not. But anyway, all of the different uh, Starbase structures can be found here onto the market and you can look at the uh, you can look at the attributes on the particular thing uh, to learn more about them uh, just keep in mind some of these things require sovereignty and other things like say the moon harvesting arrays just require that they not be in low security uh, that they not be in high security space so the moon harvesting array is restricted to security level of at most 0 0.4. So you can't you, you can set up a control tower anywhere in high security space. You just can't uh, use a moon harvesting array there. Oh, by the way, if you're returning to EVE Online from a moderate absence, yes, that is another change. You can now anchor things in solar systems all the way up to sol uh, security level 1.0. Some specific solar systems are prohibited like, say, Jita. Uh, but aside from specific prohibitions, the cap on anchoring has been raised from 0 0.7 to 1.0. So that is another change. Uh, I think that's probably enough for an introductory video about Starbases. MTU, can you think of anything we want to add? Uh, Oh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, basically, this POS is set up as a basic, basic POS that you might find in high sec. Um, the only difference being that we've got an intensive refining, refining, refining array, um, which is does have option on where you can anchor it. I believe it's in low sec. Uh, anything below zero point four. Hey, let me show info on. Let me show info on that real quick. An anchorable reprocessing array able to take raw ores and process them into minerals has a lower reprocessing yield than fully upgraded outposts, but due to its mobile nature, it is very valuable to frontier industrialists who operate light years away from the nearest permanent installation. This unit is for use in low and null security space only. Uh, so restricted to security level of at most 0 0.4. Uh, it holds 200,000 cubic meters. Let's see. Um, refining yields multiplier 0 0.54 and operational duration 10 seconds. Skills also have that multiplier. Like, uh, in station as well. All right, so there, I you, think go. That, there you go. I think the most that a lot of stations in high sec does is uh, zero point five zero uh, efficiency. Um, so this is a little bit better, and with skills, it's even better than that. Indeed. All right, I think that covers it for the basics about star bases. I'm Seamus Donahue of Eve University. And I am MTU Enforcer, also of EV University. And thank you for watching.